Since its launch, Pal World has reportedly sold over 8 million copies and reached a peak player count of over 2 million players on Steam. So how does a game dubbed Pokemon with Guns garner that kind of attention? To briefly summarize, I think the game appeals to Pokemon fans, but at the same time, it does not fit neatly into any gaming category, and as such, is its own unique product that released at a perfect time in this gaming era. Will the game be able to sustain these kinds of numbers? Who knows, but nobody can deny the fact that this game is a hit. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So I think the first reason is a controversial one. Um, I don't think we can deny that the game appeals to Pokemon fans. Whether or not the game is actually a Pokemon ripoff is a topic for another video, and spoiler alert, in my opinion the answer is no. And I just want to say as a quick disclaimer, I'm not saying Pal World is a Pokemon ripoff. In my opinion, the similarities between the two are superficial at best, and I think Pal World is an entirely different animal. Nonetheless... You cannot deny that certain similarities between the two franchises have captured the attention of Pokemon fans. And I think there are a few reasons for this. Pal World does what Nintendo does not. And I think it's plainly obvious that Nintendo and Game Freak grew somewhat complacent. They've been essentially producing the same game every year with new gimmicks, but never really innovating. And in effect, I think Game Freak has failed to embrace their OG Pokemon fans who have been begging for a more mature take on the series. And I even read one Reddit post by a user comparing Pokemon to uh, Animal Fight Club, and I think this comparison is right on the money. When you think about it, Pokemon has a bunch of ethically dubious implications for what's needed for the setting to work, and I think that type of stuff would make PETA clutch its pearls, but none of those implications are actually meditated upon in the Pokemon series. And I think Pal World embraces these ethically dubious concepts as you work your pals to death, and because of that, the game is a lot of fun to play. It doesn't really hide what it is. Pal slavery is fully on display and embraced in this game. So whether whether you agree with the Pal World Pokemon comparison or not, I think the success of this game shows that there were Pokemon were and are Pokemon fans out there who were chomping at the bit for a dark and gritty take on the series, and I think Nintendo altogether failed to deliver on that. And I think this Reddit post sums it up perfectly. This game is for the millions of Pokemon fans who are in their 30s with adult money and intrusive thoughts. But even if Nintendo didn't want to deliver on a grittier, more mature take on the Pokemon for whatever reason, maybe they wanted to appeal to kids, why not deliver on an open world Pokemon, particularly in an era where open world games have become the industry norm? And you know, while we're on the topic, you know, why is it so hard for Game Freak to figure out how to let you interact with the Pokemon? And so all in all, you know, whether or not you whether you agree with the comparison or not, Power World does appear to appeal to the Pokemon fanbase. At a minimum, the comparisons are a contributing factor in generating this media buzz, which I think in turn has led to more installations. Nintendo's lack of innovation somewhat ties into my second point, which is that Power World demonstrates what happens when you launch a good product that is accessible to a wide variety of people. Some people have kind of dubbed this point the economies of scale argument, and so to my, to my economics nerds out there, technically this isn't an economy of scale, but the point is well received nonetheless. The point being, good product plus accessibility equals cash. Nintendo is notoriously stingy with their IP, and Nintendo's essentially captured what can only be described as a captive audience. Want to play a Nintendo IP? Buy a Nintendo product. And to put it bluntly, Nintendo's pretty shameless about fleecing this captive audience year in and year out. Buy our products. We'll innovate when we want to. There's nothing you can do about it. And you know what? This just isn't a good sales pitch. And consumers aren't stupid. And I don't know why AAA developers have to learn this lesson the hard way, it seems like, every two years. The success of this game shows that Nintendo has been letting an enormous financial opportunity slip right through their fingers. And to be perfectly honest, if I were a senior Nintendo shareholder right now, I would be taking a serious look at the company's leadership. Pal World shows that there's a huge demand for Nintendo's games off Nintendo's platform. And Pal World provides PC and console players with an opportunity to scratch that Pokemon itch without having to play it on the Switch or emulate it on your PC. Putting the Nintendo comparisons aside, Pal World's launch coincides somewhat with a rebellion in the gaming community. We've seen a slew of recent videos about game developers saying things like, oh, you should be comfortable not owning the game you pay for, and $60 isn't enough, you need to cough up more money, more money, we need more money. But seriously, Pal World's what happens when you make a fun game at an accessible price point 
and launch it launch it on all platforms. It's just that simple. The game's 27 bucks and it occupies 20 gigs of storage space and whether or not you're on console or PC, you can play it. And therefore, it's going to be a hit. But what about this game makes it so appealing to a wide audience? And I think this is the part of the video where some of you can finally take a breath and stop screaming at your phone because I know that some of you like some of the Reddit users that I was talking to, you're saying, it's not Pokemon, it's not comparable. Yeah, yes, I get it. The game isn't Pokemon, not even close. It's its own unique game, and that's why it's fun. So it's very difficult to categorize this game. Obviously, there are comparisons to Pokemon, but on Reddit and YouTube, I've seen comparisons to Ark, Daisy, Minecraft, and even Call of Duty. And I think all this means is that this game is doing something right. It doesn't fit evenly into a box. And I couldn't help but compare it to Travis Scott's music, particularly his most recent Utopia album. You know, what is it? It's hip hop mixed with rock sometimes, mixed with lo-fi and ambient. And it's just, it's just tough to categorize. And because you can't categorize it, it's just art. And that's what Power World is. It has survival elements, it has these shooter elements, and yes, it has these Pokemon elements. But to dub it, Pokemon with guns, um, you know, it just seems like somewhat disingenuous because it's not just that. It's not just a ripoff. It's something entirely different. And I think the survival and building mechanics are done exceptionally well. And so far as the survival goes, it's not hardcore like DayZ where you have to play a jogging simulator for three hours to hunt for a can of food. The hunger component's there, but the game doesn't really orbit around that per se. And I think the building mechanics are there as well, but it's not like Sons of the Forest where you need to dedicate a prolonged period of time building a wall and cutting out the window. Instead, you can simply pull up your build menu and place a wall. So at least in that respect, it almost reminds me of Fortnite, just in terms of its simplicity and the build mechanic. But say you don't want to get stuck mining stone or wood for three hours, well, your pals can just do that for you. And I think that takes some of the grind out of this game that m might otherwise repel a more casual gaming audience. So what I'm trying to say is that the building and survival mechanics are just absurdly easy to pick up to such a degree that anyone can learn how to play the game in a couple of hours. Moreover, I think the technology system is done very well and it reminds me of Ark in the sense that you can go all the way from primitive to modern slash futuristic. At first on Reddit, I actually compared the Pal World Tech Tree to Civ 5, but then I got butchered for that. So yeah, we're just going to stick with the art comparison. <clears throat> but I digress. The technology progression does a great job of giving you something to work for. So the game isn't just surviving and capturing pals. The progression system, it gives you, th it gives you that extra thing to work for. It makes the game more entertaining over a longer period of time. And I think finally, we have to briefly discuss the obvious. And I think Pocket Pair's decision to add guns to the game was just brilliant. And the funniest part about it is that it was apparently added because they wanted to appeal to the American audience. And I forget who it was, but someone said something like, Americans like to shoot things. So Pocket Pair knows that. <laughs> and you know, they're not wrong. I think the addition of firearms adds an almost comical component to the game, which has contributed to its meteoric rise, and it just makes so many of these memeable moments that you see on TikTok. And you know, beyond that, it also adds that it adds that dark and gritty feel to the game that I was mentioning earlier. So I think because the game cannot be neatly fit into any box, it appeals to a wide audience. And if you look at Power World's peak times, it seems to suggest that the game has quite a bit of traction in Asia, and I can't think of another time or another game that appealed to both the American and Asian markets in this manner, other than PUBG. And PAL World is right on PUBG's tail. In fact, I fully expect PAL World to surpass PUBG's peak player count sometime this weekend. So moving on to the final reason I think this game has performed so well, there's just been a lack of quality in AAA games slash games just going stale. And I think this period in gaming reminds me of where the, where the movie industry is now. Both Hollywood and these AAA game developers are kind of force feeding us member berries year in and year out. And I have another video actually coming out soon addressing that topic, so be on the lookout for that. But self promo aside, just think about all the remakes and sequels that have come out recently. You've got The Last of Us Remastered, the most recent Call of Duty, 
was basically a multiplayer remake. Resident Evil 4, Dead Space, System Shock, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, Diablo 4, Street Fighter 6. I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, goddamn, like if you're if you're a triple A developer watching this, just take a risk for once in your life and we will reward you for it, I promise. Just look at Lethal Company. Now look at Pal World. Now go back to the drawing board and make something fresh. Please just give us a fresh IP. I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. Pow World is a game that smashes together the elements of other hit games, packages those elements into a cost-effective and refined package, innovates upon those elements that I just mentioned, and ships that product out to players across multiple platforms. And that's it. It's just different. It's something that we haven't seen before, and this is what we've been waiting for. It's not just a cheap remake. So just to briefly recap, Pal World appeals not only to Pokemon fans, but to fans of good games in general. Pal World is priced competitively, its mechanics are simple, and it comes at a time when gaming feels stale. That's why this game's a hit, and that's why I'm predicting it's going to surpass PUBG's peak player count. I hope y'all enjoyed the video, subscribe if you like it. If you liked it, feel free to disagree with me with some of the stuff in the video, and I'll, uh, I'll probably be able to answer pretty much all the comments that come. Um, hope y'all enjoyed. See ya.